We Brits are a nation of obsessive collectors. Across the country, there are storage units straining at the seams, wow. <laughs> groaning garages, and stuffed garden sheds. Wow, I've God. forgotten how much stuff I've had. Home to dreams. My director's chair. Past lives. That's unbelievable. And untold baggage. And we're drowning in it. Heaven's sake, what are all these things? But among the clutter and the junk... Empty box! <laughs> my mission is to find buried treasure. 1,500 to 2,500 pounds there. Wow. Gosh. <laughs> Unlock memories. There's a lot of memories in two boxes. And turn trash into cash. 260, 270, 280. Welcome to the world of storage hoarders. Hi, I'm Maggie McKenzie, and I'm here to help hoarders get brutal with their bric-a-brac and find fortune in forgotten treasures. Our first hoarder is Pat Hallis. After a death in the family, she moved back from France and put all her stuff into storage. Her son Simon says it's time to say au revoir to her stash. Pat's totted up nearly £1,500 in just over a year. She now wants to clear her unit, but is she ready to let go? Everything that's there now that I don't need will be good. It'll be good to get rid of. Pat, a retired wages clerk, now lives in the North Wales town of Prestaton. Home to Labour Lord and former MP John Prescott. Until recently, Pat was living in Brittany. For eight years, she was enjoying an idyllic retirement with her husband, David. It was like a three-bedroom farm. There was uh, three barns and just under three acres of land. And we both fell in love with it straight away. Sadly, last year, Pat lost David to cancer. With no ties and living alone in France, Pat's children convinced her to move back to the UK. When he died, they said, you know, like, come back. So that's what we did, and the house is empty at the moment. Obviously, it was a big trauma at the time, big upheaval at the time, but um, I think she's coped quite well because she's been with family, she's been living with my sister. Moving from a large Brittany farmhouse to a single room in her daughter's home, meant most of Pat's life was stuffed in storage. The removal men that brought us back, they just filled the unit with what I had. Pat's husband David was an antiques dealer. My dad was a really big antiques collector. There was always things that he was buying and bringing back home. The house full of memories in Brittany has remained unsold for over a year. Pat now wants to buy a bungalow close to her daughter in Wales. But with the money tied up in France, maybe selling her storage could be the key. So which one do you like? No. She's been living with her sister now for a few years and she, she does want to get her own place. I keep looking, um, just in case my house in France sells. I think my mum will react to Aggie in a positive way. Somebody else there to say, you know, do you really need these things or encouraging her to keep something that holds sentimental value. Can I persuade Pat to say bon voyage to her hoard? Here it is. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Come on then, up and up then. I'll be interesting to see what's in. Ooh! Wow. Wow, there is a lot. Fair bit of stuff here, isn't yep. there? What's it like seeing it again? It's different seeing it like this than it was, you know, like in, it's in the house. It just looks all too big now. Really? Yeah. yeah. With Pat's items stored away since happier times in Brittany, I have a feeling the rediscovery of her late husband's belongings is going to be an emotional challenge. This is one oh, that he yes. painted himself. Oh my it's good, God. isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. Did he paint a lot? I think there's about three pictures in here that he's painted. There's uh, this one of a king. Uh-huh. And the others are just landscapes. Pat wants to keep some belongings for her new home, but I'm hoping we can release her from the rest of her hoard. What are you going to do with the vase, do you think? The birthday present from Simon? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> yet, Better keep it. Better keep it. <gasps> oh, oh. You're here to help. Shed staff. <laughs> Definitely keeping you. the cannon, though. We what? bought that on our honeymoon in London. And you bought a cannon yes. on your honeymoon? I'd never heard of anybody <laughs> buying a cannon <laughs> for their honeymoon. 
it's quite nice, really, when it's all put together, you know. And you'll have it out and you'll enjoy looking at yeah. it. Yeah, Aww. I will, yes. Right, let's get some more stuff let's out. Get something Does else. Pat have the strength to cut down so the storage by thinking with her head, not her heart, and hopefully make some cash towards her new home in Wales? Our second storage holder is ex-pro golfing caddy Rick Buckley, with his long-suffering sister Christine. He's spent more than four and a half grand on storage over the past four years. That's no paltry sum. You don't get to see everything so often, so it just sits there and it's out of mind. And now it's nearly four years, and I think it's about time I stopped storing stuff. Rick lives with Christine in Atherton, near Manchester, where a history of coal mining put this town on the map. I moved back up north here about um, four years ago, and I came from Horsham in West Sussex, where I lived in a three-bedroom house. Rick and his late wife toured the world with golf. Uh, that's Sheila and myself. Mm. We were in the grounds of the palace at Monaco. All right. For the Monaco Open. When Sheila sadly passed away, in, uh, Rick moved in with his sister yeah. and boxed up his past. I've got stuff from different countries, different golf tournaments I've been to, um, and just generally stuff that I've, I've accumulated um, with travel. That's Colin Montgomery in his yes. much younger days. Yet the hoarding is driving a wedge between them. Christine wants it sorted and is here to crack the whip. A lot of things that are in there obviously have memories and you can keep memories in your head. When my sister asked me, why am I keeping it? I haven't got an actual answer for that, except just leave me alone. Um, I'll get round to it. Rick was going to take his sister on holiday last year, but illness stopped them both from travelling. If I manage to make money off the um, storage I have, uh, and the money I would save on storage, I'll put it to a really nice holiday, somewhere like Kakenna, which is a tiny island off the coast of Tunisia. I'd love to go there. It's one place I've never been. So you're ready for this? I think so. You think so? We'll give it a go. Yeah, OK. It's time for me to see Rick's hoard. Oh, dear. He's been putting off dealing with it for far too long. Can he now finally bid farewell? OK. This looks interesting. Oh, it's my golf bag. I don't play anymore now with this, yeah. but uh, I did used to. Somebody else can have the pleasure of them. Yes. Right, what else have we got in here? Would you like some four-year-old cola? <laughs> Get a plate. What have I kept these for? Very sweet little face. They are a nice Broken face. Broken antler. I know. Uh, that's a shame. Well, somebody might want it. Somebody might want it. <laughs> you never know. You never know. If it's been here all this time, you don't need it. True. You're so right. I Thank am. you very that. much. You're ganging up on me, girls, aren't you? Aren't we yeah. are, yeah. Hey. Definitely. Christine is on a decluttering mission, but can Rick get into the swing of things? Coming up, it's an emotional time for Pat as she unearths precious mementos. He's dad. And that's what, Daddy, that's what he was, a young, handsome man. And I need to kick Rick into touch over his tat. How long has it been needing to be repaired? Oh, about 20 years. Okay. Where's the skip pile? <laughs> Go on. But will either of them make any money at auction? Yes. We're dealing with two collecting dilemmas. Stockpiling is the name, but now disposing is the game. Earlier, we hooked up with Pat and son Simon, who have to unpack the contents of her Brittany farmhouse. Oh, my goodness. While ex-pro golfing caddy Rick is under pressure from sister Christine, who's making sure he's not under par with sorting through his possessions. I love hats. How many can you wear at once? It doesn't matter. Oh, but I think it does. All right, how many pairs of shoes do you wear at once? One. How many shoes have you got? More than one. There you go. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> to help our hoarders clear their units, I've asked them to divide their stuff into four piles. Keep is for the stuff they can't do without. Skip is for those items to throw away. Sell is for things they can make money out of. And charity 
for objects too good to skip. Later, antiques expert Paul Hayes will be hunting among the hoards. He wants to see if they're hiding any pounds in their packing. First, some muscle men are needed. I'm giving the couples just three hours to sort the trash from the treasure. Just look at the fallout from Pat's French home. It seems like there's plenty here that could have potential value. Not sure the same can be said for Rick's pile, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh, gosh. It doesn't like a lot. It does, doesn't it? We've got a lot to go through here. For Pat, it's a daunting task with her late husband's collectibles laid out before her. Some sort of figure. Yeah, these, there's a pair of these. There's a lady. With her money tied up in the French property, can she raise some cash here? I don't think I really want to keep them. That's good. Something Pat can make money from. She's not seen inside these boxes since moving from Brittany. But there's no time to deliberate. Just think straight. It's yeah. picked me up, Daddy, I think. So. Nice, that. Yeah. Oh, God, I hated that. We used to keep it in the bathroom cos I didn't want it anywhere else. <laughs> It's, Charity. It's Charity, yeah. Hey, Mum, look at these pictures I've just found. These are of Dad. Yeah, these are Dad. And that's what... That, yeah, that's when he was that a young, handsome man. They're really good, these. You should keep these. Should I keep these? Yeah. OK, then. Should we do this one? Yes. I'll put this over Ooh, here to Charity. You're looking very busy. How are you getting on? Yeah, very well. <laughs> I think we're getting there. Fantastic. Oh, wow. I like this. This marble. Yes, it's marble top, that. Have you had this a long time? Yeah. Come over and tell me about it. Where did you have this in your house? This was in the bedroom. We just used it as a um, set of drawers, really. Right. There's a mirror on the back of it. Yes. But this was bought with um, the wardrobe. Ah, right. Is it the, part uh, of a set? Yeah. It's been a pleasure for us to have it. We've used it quite well. So you well. don't need chest of drawers in your new house, or you've. I you're think they'll be too big. Really? Because all I want now is a small bungalow. Do you think you'd quite like a change anyway? Yeah, I think I'd probably go for pine. Yes. Something like that. Though. Lighter. Yeah, lighter yeah. wood. It's good to see Pat being rational about her belongings, but I think they need to find out more about the furniture. I've sent Pat and Simon off to visit Tom Collinge at Collinge Antiques. He's one of the biggest dealers in North Wales, trading for 30 years. That's your, uh, your mirror. Yeah, slides in. Yeah. Slides on the top there like that. Have you got it? And I'll tell you what, what we've got here, just to show you what it was really for. There's your jug and bowl. So two in the century, 1900, 1910, there you'd have your jug and bowl. And you'd come in the morning, you'd be some warm water in the bowl. Jug on the side, and wash your hands and face, have yeah. a shave in the mirror, and then obviously you've got the marble top and the marble splash back, as we call it, for obvious reasons, to yeah. stop you damaging your wallpaper or your wall. The market for this is abroad. Canada, America, they still class this as really, really old. An ensuite is the dressing table. You could hold them like that and give you the general idea of how it goes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you have the large mirror in the middle here. Yeah. You'd have these two on the side, which would pull into your side, so you could see the side of your head while you were doing your hair, etc. And that's what we term as a back wing dressing table. The wardrobe again here, what we term as a single door wardrobe. Well, when these were bought, they would be delivered to the house, and then they'd be built up in the room and put together, yeah. and then lined, generally. The most valuable piece would be the washstand. I think yeah. there's still people that would buy that today uh, and have it in a home, obviously in a bedroom, something like that. Your dressing table, a bit more difficult to sell, I have to say. You're probably looking there, 50 to 70 pounds for, for the... for the for the. Yeah, I know, it seems ridiculous, you know, it you couldn't even buy the timber for the that. amount of work that went into it. It's a lot to do with style. Yeah. Style and what and people what, are going for today. Exactly. It's more what, modern, isn't it, really? And what's in vogue. Yeah. As much as anything. Yeah. Um, so the wardrobe, I think, ladies have a lot more clothes and they it just do. isn't practical anymore yeah. and the worst part about them they're not a lot of them aren't wide enough to even turn the coat hanger straight yeah, that's true and that's a, a, a big bang with them as well yeah. reality again you know 30 40 50 pound right okay pat is disappointed it's difficult for her to come to terms with the fact that what she thought was valuable simply isn't 
maybe it's just not the right time to sell these types of furniture. Yeah, whether to keep it in storage um, a bit longer, say another year or so, but then it's the expense of the storage. Yeah. Whether that will compensate for the price that you would get in a couple of years. Don't know. I just don't know where to go with it. Poor Pat. It's a real dilemma. Perhaps the best place for it is at auction. Back at the unit, I wonder if Rick will have more luck. Downsizing his home and recent ill health has swelled his stash. Look at this lot. <laughs> I didn't know I had this much. Where do you start? I hope he doesn't get bogged down in sentimentality. This ex-golf caddy's going to take some driving. It says, to coach Buckley, the best coach in the world. How about that? Shuffed a bit with that. Hello, yeah. how are you doing? I'm not doing too badly, thanks, Aggie. Not doing too badly? Yeah. You haven't fallen out yet? Not yet, no. no Good. No, Good. lovely. So what's happening with the trophies, then? Oh, we want to keep them. Everything here is a memory. Yeah. But all these memories are up here. Yes. I don't really need the physical no, that's memories right. anymore. That's I right. might as well sort them to what, what it says yeah. here, skip, right. so keep, yeah. sell. Yes, yeah, so you just need a hand and yeah. actually physically sorting it, don't yeah. you? I understand that. It says car boot on the outside. Right. Oh, but it says car boot on the outside. Let's not change that. I'll give it to charity. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Rick, what's this box here? That's a repair job. Can we have a discussion about this? How long has it been needing to be repaired? Oh, about 20 years. What are the realistic chances of it actually being repaired? Do you mean between one and zero? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the skip pile? <laughs> Go on. It's there. Why not? Because, quite honestly, it's All right, it's, broken, it's there. Isn't it? Time's ticking for the two teams. Can Pat and Simon find something of value beyond the furniture? Then go on to game of bulls. <laughs> Please just put them with the others if you don't okay. mind. Okay. And can Rick raise enough cash from his clutter to fund that holiday? Where's the cell pile? Yes. <laughs> Fine. Good. But there's one special memento here of his globe-trotting career. What's this that? is my first day cover album. That's Nick Faldo. I've these... heard of him. <laughs> well, these are all the five golf courses in Scotland oh, right. where they have the Open. And because I knew the people in the PGA and the oh, US yeah. PGA, I sent Professional them... Golf Association, is that right? Yes, that's, yeah, Professional Golf Associations. So I sent these covers off mm -hmm. and asked them would they get any members they had who'd won the Open at Scottish golf courses to sign... And he did that for them. you? So the chances of anybody getting those signatures on that particular mm -hmm. issue are negligible. Rick may have found something here. This fantastic collection of famous golfing signatures alongside stamps could be of value. Time's up. I'm sure Rick's keeping too many mementos in his pile for Christine's liking. At least she's got him to skip a load as well. Good on Rick. He's managed to clear quite a lot. That's a pretty impressive effort. There's a big keep pile for Pat, but that's for her new bungalow. Charities are going to do well from Pat too. Lucky them. And the cell pile? I can see a wall clock and porcelain that I hope our expert will find interesting. Next up, Rick's finally saying all the right words when it comes to clearing his clutter. Happy to sell it though? Yep, yes. No hesitation. No, no, no. And at auction, Pat comes a cropper over her husband's hoard. This cannon must not be sold, underscore, underscore. We've been helping two couples with their overflowing storage units. Ex-pro golf caddy Rick has been pushed all the way by sister Christine because he's racked up over four and a half grand in storage. Hey, they're I'm, a bit I'm nutty. definitely keeping them. Are you now? I love them. I used to trip the light fantastic. Nice. Well, <laughs> and you will again. <laughs> <laughs> and Pat, with son Simon and a host of treasures from her empty Brittany farmhouse that she hopes will fund a new bungalow in Wales. Antiques expert Paul Hayes has been in the business for over 20 years. 
with Pat's late husband having been an antiques dealer, I'm hoping Paul has good reason to smile today. I've come across these set of figures here. Uh, and these are typically French. They're called French bisque or a biscuit bisque. porcelain. And they're sort of Edwardian, sort of 18, 19, 19, yeah. 10, that sort of time. Oh. Uh, and they deliberately left them without a glaze. If you think about a cup and saucer that you'll have a drink from, it always yeah. has a protective glaze. These are left in the biscuit form. And what that does, it give, gives great definition. So you can see great detail around the nasal features and around the eyebrows and so on. And that can be lost with a big thick glaze yeah. on the top. So, and these are in nice condition, which is quite rare because sometimes they get knocked off the mantelpiece or whatever yeah. and they get broken. Yeah. So that little lot there, you're looking sort of 70 to 100 pounds there. Very that good. sound all right to you? Yeah, sounds fine. All right, is that a right figure for you? Is that all right? Never mind. Should we move on? Yeah, we'll swiftly <laughs> move on. Now you have a collection of clocks. This is a French style clock. It's, it's classed as garniture de cheminée. It garnishes right. the chimney, that's where it gets your turn from. And the idea is to go against the wall above a, a mantelpiece, on a mantelpiece. But there's no age to this. How, how long ago since you, you oh. bought this? How long have you had that, Simon? Yeah. I have no idea. A long while. Right. A long, long while. Yeah. But it's probably 20 years. Yeah, it was probably newish then. Yeah. Yeah, it's not right. much older than that. But it has the look, doesn't it? It has that yes. 19th century French yeah, look, oh, which people right. love. Yeah. Uh, value wise, sort of 150, 200 on that one. It probably, wow. It's probably cost several hundred pounds when that's yeah. been bought. This one is a great old German clock, late 19th century. Uh, is that a family heirloom again, or is that something that's. No, a... that's something David bought. <gasps> Yeah. That's the beauty of that, though. I like that. This, like a steeple clock. They love these sort of architectural clocks. Yeah. Uh, late 19th century. Uh, it will chime, or it definitely... Um, yes, it, it does, does chime. There we go. <laughs> you said that with a grimace. <laughs> <laughs> well, he used to set them all going. Right. But all at different times. Gosh. <laughs> so you'd get one chime in 12 o'clock and then another one would start. Right. <gasps> all round the house. And, and yeah. Simon couldn't stand the ticking of them, no. could you? <laughs> I love them. Yeah. They're like a heartbeat going on there, really, I think. Uh, so, again, you're looking 150 to just over 200 on that one. That's a good clock, that one, I think. All right. All right, so you've got three good items there. And then a lot of pictures. Now, who was the, the oh, royalist? Who oh, was around in Queen Victoria's the time? Pictures, he just likes... <laughs> like collecting. He likes collecting pictures. Now, I must admit, my favourite is this one. This is to do with the Black Watch. It's a regimental picture. Yeah. Right. And it says that the regiment was out in Egypt, of course, all the campaigns in the late 19th century. And this has been is made... Is that what all these are around here? That's where all these are, Sebastopol, the Boer War, the uh, Indian Mutiny, all these sort of things that, that the Black Watch is involved in. And then the two characters in the middle, that's Edward VII, and this is made for the coronation, 1902. Oh, right. Well, that on its own, great piece of military memorabilia. All right? People do love these sort of uh, military items. So that's sort of 40 to £70. Pounds on its really? own, that one. Okay, yeah. I put that to one side. So it's adding up. You've got hundreds yeah, of pounds here. It is adding up. There is it's quite a few. I'll be able to have quite a lot of decorations. <laughs> yeah. You've got some great things. Thank there you. you so, your dad bought well. Yeah. yeah, looks like it. The items Paul has selected to go to auction are the pair of porcelain figures in good condition. He's priced them at 70 to 100 pounds. The 19th century style blue porcelain three-piece clock Paul's tagged it up to £200. And the German mahogany bracket clock also up to £200. And Paul's favourite, the framed military stitch picture estimated at £40 to £70. He also singled out a collection of regal prints tagged at £80 to £120. And some framed historic prints of famous liners are up for a similar amount while an early 20th century Dutch oak table was priced at around £30. But it's the grandfather clock that our expert Paul was particularly intrigued with. What I love about this one, it's got a rolling moon, so it tells you the stages of the, of the moon throughout the month. So that's a good quality 19th century clock. Good London makers tended to make them for the gentry and the aristocracy of the day, and they tend to be highly prized. Uh, so I think what we need to do with that one is to take it to a, a clock specialist. Yeah. I've arranged for them to meet Ken Roberts at the clock shop in Conway. Wow. Look at this. Gosh, look at <laughs> He's an expert restorer dealing in long case, bracket and mantle clocks. I'm hoping he'll see value in this enormous clock. So nice to see you, Ken. I see, I see uh, this clock is in, is in great company here. You know, it's yes. a wonderful show you've got. I mean, what can you tell us about this particular clock? It's a beautiful clock. The age of this would be in the region of uh, 1860, 1870. 
and it stands about eight foot. A typical Victorian clock. These Victorians, they were very artistic, weren't they? Yeah, they put a lot into, into things, them, yes. they? And did you like it when you, when you had it in the, in the hall? Did I like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it um, used to get on my nerves at night time when it was uh, chiming, and you were trying to get to sleep. Do you know what you should have done then? Cut a finger off a glove and put it on the hammer. It had deadened it down. Ah, never thought of anything <laughs> like that. That sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah. Interesting. Now, you said that's an eight foot clock. I mean, yes. how is that when you come to sell a clock like this? Around this area, you haven't got the properties that this would fit in, you see. There are people that buy them all the time. Right. Um, but you've got to have a big house. Right, so it wouldn't go in your country cottages. Which, yes. Right, I see. Yes. You need a big That's why big years ago, they used to dig a hole in the floor. Or cut a piece out of the ceiling to set it in there. So that's the only problem with these clocks. Typically family heirlooms, long case clocks have endured as a class of collectibles. The English clockmaker William Clement is credited with the first one back in 1670. Today, a good condition Edwardian clock can fetch over £10,000. If I was buying this clock, uh, I wouldn't give more than £500 for it. And I, I, I'd do the clock up, overhaul it, and I'd more probably put it in the shop for about £1,200. I think we just need to have a little think what we're going to do yeah. Yeah. now I about think that. We do, and, yeah, uh, a little talk. Really appreciate your time, Ken. Okay, sir. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Lovely to meet you, anyway. Thank you very much. Okay. You've got some Thanks. lovely clocks. Okay. Can, can I ask you one question? Yes. What time is it? Is it, is it I 10 to 7? I have got the faintest idea. <laughs> 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 it was very interesting. Um, getting the information about the clock, but I would have expected a bit more than the value that he put on it. I'm sure Dad did know what he was talking about when he bought these things, so I think yeah. he would be disappointed with that. And I think we'll be keeping hold of it for a bit longer, probably. We've come to the auction house to see how the rest of Pat's Five, items yeah. fare under the 30, hammer. 32. With low valuations on her antiques, Simon's now decided to renovate and keep the grandfather clock. I thought whilst it's there in the clock shop, we might as, we might as well do the work to it. Yes, yeah. And that's then he'll right. deliver it back to my Fantastic, house. fantastic. So, Pat, how would your husband feel about seeing you at auction here today? I think he'd be pleased that mm -hmm. we're here. We actually found the letters that he'd written to say that we couldn't sell certain uh -huh. items. Most of them have got what he's bought them for and then the value at the time ah, in 77. right. This Karen must not be sold, underscore, underscore. You're laughing. I know. Oh, dear. We bought it on our honeymoon, that one. So you're paying attention to this? I am. Yeah. Yes. That's very funny. <laughs> Thank you very much for showing Thank me you. this. Thank goodness it's one of the items she wanted to keep. With the auction about to begin, let's see what auctioneer William Rouse thinks of the items Pat has brought to sell. 95, all done. Pat has got quite a lot of things in the sales today. Certainly when the van arrived, her lots took up a good proportion of it. There might be a disappointment, there might be a, a couple of good surprises. The furniture perhaps, in some cases, we might struggle with, but the rest of the things in the pictures, I'm sure they'll sell. Let's hope they do. But Pat's decided to put high reserves on her items, which is always a risk. She could end up taking everything home again. First up, it's the porcelain, estimated at 70 to 100 pounds. 55 pounds is bid for this lot at 55, 60 I'll take. With me at 55 pounds, anybody else? 55. Not sold. Well, sadly, the reserve price of 80 pounds scuppered the sale. The German clock was also unsold, again due to Pat's reserve. Same result for the liner prints. Now Paul's choice, the framed military picture, valued at 40 to 70 pounds. Bid 20, 22, 25, 28, 30, here at 30 pounds. At 30 pounds, we're all done finished. 30 pounds in the room for 30. Sold for 30 pounds. Having no reserve can boost sales. The framed regal prints also sold for 80 pounds. Next up, it's the furniture Pat took to the specialist. It was valued quite low, but will our bidders be tempted by the dresser, estimated at up to £150? Same for the Victorian wardrobe. 
and there's also a French sideboard for up to £200. Will anyone bid for her larger items? No. Oh, what a shame, none have sold. Again, it's Pat's reserve that sank the sales. Surely the circular Dutch table will sell. Keenly priced at up to £30. £32 is bid. £35, £38. £40. Well, that's good. Five on four. Forty pounds. Ten pounds more than expected. Well done, Pat. I hope the blue porcelain clock, valued up to two hundred, will also sell. One hundred and twenty pounds. One thirty. One forty. One fifty. And one hundred and fifty. And one hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty pounds. Phew! Gone for Pat's reserve price of one hundred and fifty pounds. Lot 101 now is a modern white gold. Four items sold from 12 lots. The unpopularity of dark wood furniture reduced her sales, as did those reserves. So that wasn't a massive success, was it? No. Quite a few unsold items today. How do you feel about all those going back home with you? <laughs> what can I say? I was a bit disappointed that they didn't sell, because mm -hmm. I was hoping that they would. Mm. We've not lost anything. Mm -hmm. lost Just had the experience, which has been yes. good. Yes, yes. Yeah. We were surprised that the little the Dutch little table, table sold for had. forty pounds because we was... we were going to put on the charity shop pile. Yes, that's good, <laughs> so that's then, good. isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's good yeah. that one. After commission, Pat has raised two hundred and seventy-six pounds from the sale of her items at auction. But it's the storage unit, if cleared, that could save her real money, nearly £1,500 a year. So it wasn't a complete damp squib, but you do have a fair number of unsold things there. Yeah. What are you going to do with those? We will try and sell them ourselves. So do you feel you have the tools now to be able to get rid of your stuff? We've got other values of things, so mm -hmm. it'd be easier for us to find somewhere to sell them. Maybe local to where her mum lives. Well, I'm pleased that we've been able to help you this far and I wish the best of luck selling on the rest of your stuff. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. The good news is that Pat's now motivated to sell her antiques. She's keeping some mementos of her happy retirement in Brittany, but she's moving on with her new life in North Wales. After the break, remember that box of Rick's I threw out? I must admit, out of all your items, yes. I really like that. I'm made to look like a complete amateur by our expert. In any condition, these things are, are, are sorted, <laughs> so they're nice. And is this my £30 start me? And at auction, will Rick hammer it home? Happy with that? <laughs> Earlier, Pat and son Simon thought the stored contents from Pat's French farmhouse was worth a pretty penny, but sadly for Pat, she made less than £300 at auction. Will Rick and his sister Christine fare better? Getting him to sort beyond the sentimental is the first task. Best coach in the world. How about that? That's why I'm calling back our antiques expert, Paul Hayes, to have a look through Rick's wares. So, Paul, have you found any treasures amongst Rick's stuff? Well, do you know, it's been really good fun, actually, having a good rummage through, and it's amazing what you do find. These two canteens are quite nice. The stainless steel, and they are complete. That's really important. When you're looking at canteens, if one knife's missing and one fork's missing, yeah. it's a big problem. But this is a ready-to-go canteen. So if I said, for the sake of an auction, maybe 30 to £50, pounds, I mean... Cost me about £400 then when I bought them. That's right. A bit of a reality check for Rick it's worth far less than he thought, which is so often the case. What else has Paul found? A little bit better are these picture posts. Oh. Oh, yeah. Now, I love these. They're all wonderful photographs and wonderful magazines throughout yeah. the 1930s into the 1950s. Nice. Yeah. What it does, it gives you a real insight in what life was like Indeed, yes. at that time, leading yeah. up to the Second World War, these ones, Very isn't nice. it? Yes. So those lot, you look a little bit better, looking sort of 40 to 70 pounds. Mm. Oh, that's good. Lot. All right, oh, that's so that good. was... And then, of course, we've got some cameras. The actual mechanisms in these, I mean, they're like a, just poetry in motion. They're mm. beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. It's like having a really nice car or you know, a mm. bit of engineering, and I think yes. people love it. It took fabulous pictures, uh -huh. and still does. You've got a lovely camera here, you've got a video camera, you've got a set of binoculars. I mean, if I said sort of 
50 to 80 pounds as, as a lot, I'm afraid. That's even though this must have cost more at the time, <laughs> but it's realistic, you know, in today's I market. Know. I understand really that, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Now, tell me about all these chess boards and cribbage sets and the yeah. musical one at the bottom there, and a lovely writing slope. I mean, I found that in your, in your skip pile. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> well, someone of Scottish origin um, <laughs> persuaded so me that it was rubbish. <laughs> oh my god. So, well, do you know what? In any condition, these things are, are, are sort out, so they're nice. <laughs> uh, not so they're worth a lot of money, but they are desirable. A bit of a polish, fix the hinges, you know, a bit of love and care. That would yeah. be a really, really nice yeah, box. It dates maybe nice. 18, 70, 18, 80. So it's it's really nice. okay, can we move on? Sorry. Can we move on? <laughs> <laughs> I've put sort of 30 to 50 pounds on that lot, okay. but, but that's really for the box along the rest will carry it, help it carry it. And then, how do you fancy night on the tiles? <laughs> <laughs> so where, where are these all come from? Rick got these from Trafford Park Sunday Market. He asked how much it was. And he said £2. Well, for an investment of £2, I think you've done quite well. I mean, I mean if I said, I to give has. them a chance at auction, mm -hmm. if I said between £30 and £50, pounds, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a great markup, isn't it? How oh, yes. It is indeed. Oh, yes. Oh, OK, so you've got some good quality antique lots. Thank, Thank you. Great Thank you. A great boost for Rick in his bid to break the hoarding habit, Paul spent some diamonds in the rough. More than £600 could be made at auction if he sold at the top estimates. First, the canteen of stainless steel cutlery, valued at up to £50. The collection of picture post magazines from 1939, 40 to £70. There's the camera gear Paul's priced at up to 50 to £80. That infamous box I nearly threw away with board games up to £50. Sorry, Rick. Then there are 14 tiles keenly priced at 30 to £50. The oak and lead glazed display unit valued at 40 to 60 pounds. Rick's female figure painting valued at up to 100 pounds. And the Royal Mail yearbook tops the pack from Paul at 80 to 100 pounds. And with the 1930s mantel clock ticking away at 20 to 30 pounds, it's looking promising for the auction. Now tell me about these first day covers. What's the story with these? These are the golf courses of the British Open in Scotland. These are all the past winners on those courses. I think the fact that you've got all those signatures on one mm. first day cover is actually quite a good thing. OK. But what I would think we need to do is to go to someone who does nothing but autographs and, and right. have a good look at them. Right. On Paul's advice, I've sent them both out to meet Graham Rowley. He runs an online auction site for sports memorabilia, and golf is his passion. What's the going market for things like autographs? Are they sought after items? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. So who have we got here? Um, well, actually, uh, it's got some lovely signatures on here. There's uh, mm -hmm. Faldo, Tom Watson, Nick Price, mm -hmm. Greg Norman, by the way. Uh, he's a reluctant signer. Mm. He doesn't sign many things. How do we prove that they're not a facsimile or they're, they're like a, not a forgery? But is it really important to have good provenance with them, a good sort of background with it? Uh, provenance is everything, really, you know. Uh, there's so many fakes around, and before anyone goes off spending large amounts of money, you know, they have to be careful and go to a reputable dealer uh, and get letters of authenticity. Sign goods from golf balls to photos can fetch hundreds of pounds at auction, but authenticity is essential. Some are even certified with images of the sportsmen at the relevant signing session, so you know it's actually from them. And is this the sort of thing that does sell particularly well? Do people go for this sort of thing? Or? Oh, yes. Uh, people collect first day covers. Yes. People collect golf mm -hmm. and people collect signatures. You so you go like a th three way uh, whammy. There's, there's a hole in three. Yeah, hole in three. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a birdie or an eagle? An albatross. albatross. It's an albatross. Yeah, I knew it was one of the other. One of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would think that uh, if you came available for sale, oh, at least £150. And uh, it, I'd be del delighted to have it yeah. in my auction. That's a great valuation, and it's certainly given Rick food for thought. Absolute pleasure. Well, obviously, my item today hasn't sold, uh, but I have every expectation that it will do through a specialist um, like Graham. I now have a lot more faith that everything else will go and I should be so pleased to see the back of a lot of stuff. It's now auction time. I hope Paul's optimism for Rick's trinkets gets turned in some real pounds. So, what's he excited about today? We've got some vintage tiles. Excellent for a, um, anybody who's got a project 
that's returning a fireplace, say, back to original, back uh -huh. to original mid-Victorian. Uh -huh. They would use them as the surround for it. Must be worth a few, Bob. Yeah. Yes, I think that's yeah, his best should be item, very good, really. that. Mm -hmm. There's just time for auctioneer Matthew Caddick to give his verdict on Rick's lots. Rigged to low-value items will sell at auction. They've been priced at the right sort of uh, area, but pretty much everything's below £100. In amongst the items, there is a Royal Mail yearbook. Now, that's a very niche collector's market, and it's priced probably, I think, it's the most expensive lot he's got today. If the right person's here, it's fair money. Um, uh, other than that, the items really, we're going to have to see how they perform today. It's one of those ones where I don't think anyone's going to get too excited about the lots. If they're the right money, everything should sell, though. At the last minute, Rick puts reserve prices on his items. He simply couldn't help himself. I'm not worried you might be taking these items home with you again. I don't think so. I think they'll sell. Do you know? I'm optimistic. Lot number 180A. First up, Rick's cutlery and chef's knives. A cheap cut at up to £50. I know, but second hand value. 130, Rick's reserve paid off this time. The cutlery went for nearly three times the estimate at £130. Rick's on a roll. Selling at 28 and gone. £28. The picture post collection sells for £28. Then the camera gear for more, £48. £48. £48, happy with that. <laughs> Next up, the board games and box Paul pulled out of the skip with an estimate of £30 to £50. No bids. Oh dear, sadly unsold. It's Rick's last minute reserves. Also applied to the painting, which could scupper his bid for a storage-free life. Lot number 180H, the 20th century oak lead glaze wall unit uh, with drawers and cupboards. No one wants it for £20 then. Not sold. It really does seem that no one wants dark furniture these days. Never in this world. Gold, not sold. Gold. Can't take that thing home again. Time for a 1930s oak mantle clock. Valued it up to £30. £20 on bid, £22, £25. More than £20, come on. £30, £32. At £30 in front of me, £30. Go on. Go on. Same £30. £30. Sold for a fair price. It's Rick's final push, 14 Edwardian tiles. Our expert liked them, so let's hope there's potential to make some money. I'm starting with £55, I'll take 60 in the room. Lock on. Mm. 60. 60 there, 65, 70. Says no, do you want 70 there? 70, 75, 80? Yes. 85, 90. And That's 85 pounds, right. so we take 90 now, £85. Are we done on the book and selling at £85? All done. Yes. Holding. Okay. Brilliant. A hole in one for Rick with the tiles a highlight. £85 banked for these. Rick's keen to put a final stamp on the day's lots with an estimate of up to £100 for his Royal Mail yearbook. This is a big one. The uh, box and mail Royal Mail yearbook. At £40 and me, take five now. £40, not quite enough at £40. No one wants to advance on that. Are we done at 40 Not sold again. Oh, dear. Oh, right. Not sold. Sadly, not sold. In the end, it's those reserves that scuppered Rick's sales. In total, four items unsold, but still five that did. You think that now, you know, you've had this good start, it's, it'll set you on the road to selling more stuff? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. I've got to sell it. I've got to move it on. Yeah. Um, do you know I'm how silly. Yes, I'm sir. silly spending the kind of money I've been spending on storage. On auction day, Rick totted up £295, less commission. But if he cleared his storage, this is where the big money can be saved, nearly £1,300 a year. This money that you've made today, mm -hmm. plus the money that you will make because you will sell more stuff, mm -hmm. you've got a plan for it. A holiday. Yeah. That would be very good. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I've got to clear it all. Mm. Excellent. Well, that's good. You've got an incentive now, haven't yeah. you? Yes. Best of all, 
Rick's doing what he should have done a long time ago, and he's getting rid of what he doesn't need, mm. which has been, been the best thing, and your help's been invaluable. I'm really glad. Yes, yes. I'm so glad. It's really very good indeed. Rick's now cleared half of his unit. The rest will go when he moves into a new place. So Rick's well on the way to a clutter-free future. And what about that trip to Tunisia? Well, if he goes on to sell the sign golfing first day covers and that painting at the local art shop, it will certainly go part way towards a ticket to the sun. Another success story for our hoarders today. They've turfed their tat, downsized their units and can now start using storage sensibly.